After years of trying, Sheikh Mohammed's Godolphin stable finally won the big one, the Epsom Derby in the UK. But why does that matter to Brand Dubai? I'm Eddie Taylor, I'm joined today by Jeremy Lawrence, and you're watching Inside AB. So Jeremy, talk a little bit about how important the race victory was. Well, obviously the Epsom is the world's oldest horse race, I think. It's a massive date in the calendar. So it really mattered. Godolphin had won so many races over the years, but never this one. So that was big in itself. Godolphin, of course, was founded in 1992, so it's 26 years old now. Uh, it's won over 4,800 races, employs 1,500 people, and has, looks after 4,500 horses across the world with stables in the UK, in Dubai, and, and uh, Australia. So it's a big, big operation, and this is kind of the pinnacle of everything they've done so far. And the, you talked about the operations around the world. Their headquarters is out of Newmarket in the UK, and you've actually been there to check it out, haven't you? I have, yeah, a couple of years ago. Um, They've got two stables in Newmarket, which is just outside London, Moulton Paddocks and Godolphin Stables. Um, Moulton Paddocks is, is incredible. It's, it's by far and away the best stables in, in Newmarket and therefore the country. They've got things like temperature controlled seawater walkers for the horses. They've got a solarium so the horses can top up on vitamin D. They've got the best vets. I mean, everything's catered there for the horses. Everything's done so, so well. So. It's a really fantastic operation and, and it's, it's a centre for excellence for Godolphin, really shows off what they can do. This is like the world capital of horse racing, isn't it? New Market in Suffolk in the UK. The, yeah. the, the whole town basically revolves around the horse racing industry and the thoroughbred breeding industry. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about how Godolphin works within that community. Well, I spent a weekend there and I spoke to a lot of people talking about the initiative the initiative, sorry, that Godolphin have got in the community. If I can run through some of them, I went to the, um, the Dubai-sponsored Future Champions Festival, which celebrates young horses coming through, but also highlights the, the efforts of, of His Highness's contribution to nurturing young talents in the race industry. So you've got things like the Godolphin Fly and Start competition, which is uh, candidates selected each year to, to have a scholarship to enter the horse racing industry. And um, it means anyone from any background, if they're passionate enough, can enter what can be seen as an exclusive industry. They've got Massar Godolphin, which is an opportunity for young UAE nationals to get involved properly from the ground up in the industry. They've got the Education Week, where 150 pupils from Newmarket Academy get to learn about the industry and lots more initiatives that go along with that. So they really do work hard in the community to really sort of foster the entire community around horse racing and around excellence in, in the industry in Newmarket. I mean, the obvious question is, you know, if you're geared up towards winning the prime horse races, why don't your energies just get focused into that? Why do the extra stuff? Well, this, this is where we get down to the real rub of it. So one horse racing insider I spoke to, I, I said that exact thing. I said, what, why would you do that? And he just said, why not? Just why would you not want to be the best? And I still sort of questioned why you would make such a considerable investments in something when you didn't really need to, because a lot of these investments that have been made into local community, pro community projects, they don't even say it's Godolphin or it's come from Sheikh Mohammed or from Dubai, it's, it's anonymous. So it's just overall investing in excellence in the community. But then when I got back from the trip, I looked at the Godolphin website and alongside the timeline for the development of Godolphin, they've got a timeline for the development of Dubai. So it shows well, two things really, going back that 1684 was the birth of by early Turk, one of the three foundation sides of the modern thoroughbred horse, which shows how significant horses are in Arabian culture. Sheikh Mohammed himself went to his first race in 1967 in the UK with his brother Sheikh Hamdan, bought um, Dalham Hall Stud Farm in Newmarket in 1981 and then established Godolphin in 1994. So Godolphin, by the way, is named after the Godolphin Arabian, one of the three stallions that came from Arabia to Europe in the 1700s. So you're talking about a really, really rich heritage that, that Sheikh Mohammed, through Godolphin, has decided to continue and make sure it lives through to future generations. Going back to that timeline, alongside this story with all those dates were stories about how Dubai has developed and it went through from the dredging of the dry docks, the establishment of Emirates Airlines, and you could see the development of the center of excellence, Godolphin, along with, with Dubai and its development into something that no one would dream was possible. So really, it's kind of pushing boundaries 
yes, for the sake of doing it, just to see how far you can take it, but also to create a legacy that will live on after we've all gone. So, so it's a passion play as much as anything, this investment, and he's the world's biggest investor into the horse racing industry, isn't he now? Is this really just about just a deep-seated enthusiasm for the sport? Yeah, and a desire to really see that the sport lives on long after we're all not here. And I think that we'll see many more victories in the famous blue silks of Godolphin with that kind of investment behind it. Thank you very much indeed for watching Inside AB. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join us again.